Hello and welcome to your reaction. This is Top 10 Most Wholesome Animals in my very biased opinion. Watch on Casual Geographic. I'm pretty sure I haven't watched this video because it's not on my channel. But then again, I'm pretty sure sometimes Casual Geographic also changes the title. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure I haven't watched this, right? That was Top 10, but it was more about serial killers or something or yeah, whatever. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. So let's watch this one. Remember if you like this and don't forget to subscribe so I know which type of videos to react to more. Check out the next Sunday. There's a link in the description. And yeah, let's watch it. So we hit two million subscribers on this channel. That really only started because I thought Trump was gonna gulag TikTok, which means there's enough of us to invade the state of Delaware and have pretty good odds doing it. So in honor of us reaching one million subs twice, and also since my mom said I should make more lighthearted videos so she doesn't have to lose sleep to support her son. Here are the top 10 most wholesome animals you'll find in nature. Okay, he started a YouTube channel because what is it, Trump? He thought Trump's gonna just, you know, stop TikTok. I mean, uh, there was a real possibility of that. I mean, in India, I don't know if TikTok's resumed or not, but there was an issue. I mean, there was a problem with India and China or whatever, <laughs> and they stopped TikTok. So, yeah, lots of people that are, you know, good enough followers in TikTok were really heartbroken. So I can see where it's coming from. While there will be accurate facts in this video, It will also be in my very biased opinion. And if you're a longtime supporter, you probably already know what the top four are gonna be. Also, a little side note before we get started. When I call an animal wholesome, I am assigning human characteristics to a wild animal. In real life, nature don't care about being cute or wholesome. It's survival of the fittest, and in the wild, morality gets you put on a t-shirt. Basically, what I'm trying to say is animals aren't good or evil, they're just them. But if you could kindly suspend your disbelief for the next at least eight minutes, because you know minerals, that'd be great. All that aside, at number 10 is an animal you probably wouldn't even expect in a video like this. Honestly, you couldn't name five animals that have a worse PR team than bats. Hollywood mm. definitely didn't do them any favors reputation-wise. And a certain virus named after a beer only made it worse. But not only do they have a strong case for one of the most wholesome, you could also argue that bats may be one of the most impactful animals on Earth. First of all, there's a lot of them. About 25% of all mammal species identify as bats. A quarter of all the mammals on this planet are some type of this weird little bird mouse. And because bats contribute to society by pollinating, if Thanos snapped them all into dust, the world's ecosystems would collectively collapse and food chains everywhere would become ground zero. Over 500 plants depend on bats to keep them in business, and losing them could affect your way of life in places you didn't even realize. Want to add some banana to your morning oatmeal? Chances are your breakfast was brought to you by bats. Enjoying a mango smoothie on the beach? You're probably drinking the fruit of this fur kite's labor. Ever get some liquid courage in you, drunk text your ex, reconcile, work through your issues, grow together as people only to ultimately get married and start a life together? Yeah, probably not. But if you did, better invite a bat to the reception. Because without them pollinating the plant agave, there'd be a lot less tequila and less happy mistakes in the world. And I mean that literally. Some of you might not be alive. Beyond that, every night millions of bats meal prep the insects that make our lives more difficult. It's estimated that bats save the United States anywhere from 3.7 up to 54 billion dollars in agriculture just by being free pest control. Now I already know what you're probably thinking. Despite what you might think, the human population would be less healthy if it wasn't for these bats. Many bats help keep the mosquito population in check. Mosquitoes which also happen to be air ubers for diseases like Zika and West Nile. But none of that really matters because bats were guaranteed a spot on this list off their looks alone. This bat was literally named after the fact that it looks like a fox in the face. And if they didn't get the blame for putting us in quarantine, they probably would have ranked higher. Hmm. So see the bats, if you, people think that bats get bad PR because of the disease and things. First thing they think of is diseases, like things jumps from bad a lot, but I don't think that's the reason. People see bats and they just say, oh, those are the weird looking creature. Those are rats with wings and they, you know, I guess hang upside down in caves and places that you wouldn't expect. Like you would not go basically. So just like if anybody is different than you, oh, they're weird. That's the human mentality. And that's like, oh, bad. They are weird. They fly weird. They have, you know, they hang upside down. Right. And then obviously uh, they had to make this all Dracula bullshit. Right. So that, you know, became very worse for the bats to begin with. So yeah, bats just got bad PR Hollywood wise, right? <laughs> But yeah, our ecosystem is so fragile, right? Like any species, like even bats, right? Just one species like bats, if not one species, you know, one animal like bats, if their species basically goes extinct, we are all fucked. The whole food, food chain collapses. Right, so we are very fragile. Earth is very fragile. All the animals are kind of depend on each other. So yeah, anything goes left and right. That's it. 
Now who didn't think cats were going to end up on this list? The animal that could probably murk us in our sleep managed to finesse its way into over 30 million homes in the US alone. Mm. And I do mean finesse because cats might as well have just domesticated themselves. Cats originally came into our lives to snack on the mice that were after our food. But cats also changed minor things about themselves to be around us. While wild cats are more solitary introverts, these cats became more social and tolerant of people. Their reduced aggression and aversion of people made them ideal pets, and their diet of our enemy the rat made them the perfect travel partners as we explored this great big ball of dirt and water. As long as we kept them fed, cats had no problem riding shotgun. Which is why we barely had to domesticate them ourselves, they were basically close to perfect from the beginning. Which is why where a shih tzu looks nothing like a wolf, a house cat still looks like it has a lot in common with its wild cousins. We never really needed a selection process for cats the way we did with other animals, cause there wasn't a whole lot we needed to change. Mm, and yeah, as cats cute. spent more time around us, they started to figure us out and adjust their behaviors accordingly. You've probably heard that normally adult cats don't meow to each other in the wild, but they'll do it with their owners since they know humans will react to that sound with more urgency. They even developed a special type of her that most people find impossible to ignore just to ensure they get fed. But cats give as much as they take. There are legitimate health benefits to having a cat under your roof, which include lowering stress and anxiety and reducing the risk of heart disease. Studies even show that they can purr at a frequency that has therapeutic healing effects on human bones and muscles. And that's not even mentioning all the stories of cats valuing human lives enough to risk their own. Tara the cat went viral after saving her four-year-old human from an attacking dog. Oreo here did the same, but instead of a dog, he took on a venomous rattlesnake to defeat. Oh, I have to watch that clip again. I love that shit. Look at that thing. Terror the cat went viral. Dog just around the cat just came full fucking speed, like just slammed its own body into the dog. This After is so good. Look at that. Four year old human from an attacking dog. Get your ass out. <laughs> Oreo here did the same, but instead of a dog, he took on a venomous rattlesnake to defend his family. And when Rick Chap suffered a near fatal heart attack, it was his cat Buddy that saved his life by running across the house and getting his wife's attention. For an animal that looks constantly done with everything, cats really are just nature's son today. And if it wasn't for the billions of animals that get 404 by outdoor cats, they definitely would have ranked higher. Yeah, see, the thing with cats is there's a, this, uh, this thing, right? Like, dogs are the most loyal, while cats will watch you die or something. It's because of the look and all the meme. And maybe there's some truth to that, right? Cats can be a bit stone cold. But yeah, this account clearly states that cats would do the same thing the dogs would do. Try to save your life. I love the how cats just jumped in from the dog, right? This, that's just awesome. And with the cats, obviously their appearance didn't change. Because if you see a tiger just playing around with the ball, even that would, oh, look at that, isn't that cute? And that's a fucking tiger. So all the feline can be really cute, right? <laughs> One of my favorite movies of all time is Into the Spider-Verse. If you followed me on Instagram, you probably could have guessed that. And one of my favorite lines in the whole movie was when Peter B. Parker says, Could you imagine a seahorse seeing another seahorse and then making it work? Well, he wasn't exactly lying. Seahorses are famous for two things. One is that it's actually the guys that are the ones that get maternity leave. Two is that they're monogamous and mate for life. Not all seahorses are loyal. In fact, some will actually switch partners mid-season. But some like the New Holland seahorse will find another seahorse and in fact find a way to make it work. Especially since the longer a seahorse marriage lasts, the more luck they have raising children. Of course a healthy relationship doesn't just happen. Which is why every morning seahorses will reinforce their pair bond with a dance. They often intertwine their tails and even sometimes change colors as they mirror each other's movements in their version of a waltz. It is aggressively wholesome. And then there's the fact that males are the ones that give birth and some can pop out thousands of Xeroxes at once. And as soon as he does, his partner's ready to knock him up again. Now there are a few things that knock them down on a wholesome scale. Baby seahorses are known as fry, and occasionally the male takes this too literally by eating his own children. Then there's the fact that seahorses are one of the most efficient life takers in the ocean, with a hunting success rate of 90%. But overall, if you could have a relationship like the seahorses, you'd probably take it. Or you'd want the marriage of another animal further down this line. This animal was 100% a biased pick and I'm not going to apologize for it. The pangolin earns the distinction pangolin. of being the most polite animal I've ever seen. This is the look of an animal patiently waiting for his mom to get off the phone so he can ask her for $10 to buy flowers for his middle school yes. crush. <laughs> to protect their claws, they often walk That's around the on the thing that rolls up into the ball, right? Like the embodiment of, excuse me, I don't mean to bother you. There's also the yeah. fact that underage pangolins are known as pangapups, and they'll often hitch a ride and even nap on their mother's tail. If there's anything negative about this turtle gerbil, I'm Helen Keller to it. Instead of being predictably related to armadillos, they're actually closer to carnivores like cats, dogs, and bears. 
And that is exactly the kind of defiance I respect. Pangolins will often take mud baths to help keep themselves parasite free, but it somehow also manages to make them even more adorable. But because we can't have nice things, penguins are the second most trafficked mammal by humans. The most trafficked are humans themselves, which is what inspired this group of men from protecting this pretty privileged pine cone from perilous poachers. You better like this video, that sentence took way too long to pronounce. To raise awareness of their efforts, a photographer did a photo shoot of these men with, of course, their penguins. Even with their population threat, and you can still count this live action Pokemon to put a smile on your face. Like bats, penguins do get a lot of blame for a certain beer virus. And of course, there's that South Park episode about it. But like I said, I'm Ray Charles to any form of penguin slander, and that's simply not going to change. What? What South Park episode? This might be an unexpected addition on this. I watched all the old South Park, I don't know about the newer one. I'm pretty sure I watched all the old South Park. I, I'm not even sure of that anymore. But I'm pretty sure I watched a lot of it. There was an episode of that. I don't know. This list. Because chimpanzees are some of the most violently homicidal things with a pulse. One chimpanzee. of the worst ways to meet your higher creator is to have a chimpanzee book the appointment. Yet somehow an animal directly related to them is a perpetual pacifist. At number six is our closest cousin in the animal world, the Bonobo. They look like chimps nature tried to draw strictly from memory, but their personalities are polar opposites. Their societies are built on love and peace, which is why there are rarely cases of bonobos killing each other. Also, they're female dominated. But unlike other matriarchal social circles, not all the females in the bonobo circle are necessarily related. And while there is a hierarchy, they do look out for each other. High ranking females will often even defend newcomers from the unwanted advances of males. And instead of castrating each other like their murderous cousins, bonobos solve conflicts with affection. They are the hippie chimps of the Congo. Only Seriously. thing is, sometimes they're a little too affectionate, which is why any movie starring bonobos is rated B. As in, be sure to have to talk with your kids before you go see them in a zoo, or they may come home with questions you might not be prepared to answer. They be fornicating. A lot. But these apes on ecstasy use a no pants dance as a way to reinforce bonds within the group and solve disputes without actually causing injury, which makes them the most unproblematic thing with thumbs in the world. But it's also why finding safe for work videos of them was veteran difficulty. One wrong move and what they like to do to each other, guidelines will do to me. <laughs> yeah, guideline is pretty strong about that stuff. You can get a, get away with something strong, even the war type stuff, right? Might get air restricted, but if you know, if there's anything of that, there is a direct community strike. That was surprising thing about chimpanzee. There's a personal chimpanzee that is opposite of because this channel has taught me something. It's just chimps are just like, ah, damn, stay away from that. <laughs> this is different. Swans are often considered the mascot of peace, love, and loyalty. I rebuke that. Swans are mean spirited Q tips drunk off pretty privilege. Before a bird that apparently mates for life, swans actually have a divorce rate of about 5%. Meaning, on average, one in every 20 swan couples calls it quits during breeding season. Flamingos, on the other hand, believe in monogamy the way Nick Cannon believes in birth control, since they have a divorce rate of about 99%. And penguins aren't even worth discussing since they'll cheat on their partner with a hole in the ground. But the most faithful of the birds is the albatross, with a divorce rate between 1 and 3%. The albatross will spend years waiting for the right mate. These seabirds can easily live into their late 50s, so if they got one thing, it's time. Once two albatrosses do pair up, they'll perform a synchronized dance ritual to strengthen their pair bond. It's like the bird version of renewing their vows. Single albatrosses will spend years practicing and perfecting the courting dance, so they have the choreography down by the time they actually need it. And with their lifespan, these couples often spend decades raising chick after chick. Breakups are rare, and it's usually a result of multiple years of breeding failure. Climate change has also caused a slight rise in albatross divorces, but I'm not about to hold that against them. They're like the sea horse, except they're a lot less likely to dip out on their partner, and infinitely less likely to turn their children into a kid's meal. It takes a lot for me to give a bird props, and the albatross 100% earns it. It wasn't a matter of if, but when quackles were going to make an appearance. Google the happiest. <laughs> when he said it's really hard for me to give a bird props, they just, I just went through the everything. Yeah, I mean, birds can be really fucked up, right? It doesn't matter which bird it is, especially marking your own, I guess, kids or whatever. <laughs> That's just, yeah, the, but, I mean, they are the descendant of, they are the living dinosaurs, so I don't know. Maybe dinosaurs were the same way all fucked up animal on earth and it'll get one trying to bear hug you through the screen. Like name? the penguin, the quokka was guaranteed quokka. a spot on this list on their appearance alone. Being the most photogenic thing in nature counts for something. And since quokkas on rotten nests have no natural predators, they have little to no fear of humans. Which is how quokka selfies became a thing. 
Walkers are such mascots for positivity that they single-handedly boost tourist numbers to rotten nests the way LeBron did to Cleveland. In fact, you're probably surprised not that Quackers are here, but that they're not ranked higher. Well, there's always going to be people that take things too far, and that often gets them attacked by Quackers, and oftentimes it's the children getting the worst of it. To be fair, going viral might have been the worst thing that could have happened to them. Tourists often treat them as a plush toy rather than a wild animal, and that often gets them dealt with appropriately. And as their lack of fear towards humans gets taken advantage of, the Quaka ironically gets abused by those same humans. Which of course means them lashing out has nothing to do with them and everything to do with us. There is also this. While Quakas don't actively yeet their children, mothers will loosen muscles in their pouch as a last resort when being chased by a predator. So as the screaming, writhing Joey falls and distracts a predator, Mom of the Year gets to live to make another baby. Which makes sense in the grand scheme of things, since you'd rather lose the baby than the baby maker. But that kind of parenting does you no favors in a list like this. But it doesn't change the fact that when this travel size kangaroo steps up, depression here. It's better to lose baby than baby maker. That would not work in human world, right? Because we have the luxury of basically have complex thought and actually defense. But we need to understand that in the wild, wild animal world, right? Survival is the top priority because even that is too hard to achieve, right? Especially with the food chain. So yeah, you could still see that. But just seeing that cute face and just like, well, there's a dark side to it. Light just dims down to darker. And they talk about how they just throw their kids out and run away. <laughs> Google, we don't deserve, and it'll autofill dogs in your search box. Google knows what's up. The irony is that the animal we got dogs from had every reason to hate us. Thousands of years ago, wolves and humans hunted the same prey and were each other's biggest competition. But then we teamed up and now you can expect to find a dog in millions of homes worldwide. From apex predator to devoted house pet, there are just too many wholesome facts about dogs to count. For example, studies showed that dogs are more likely to approach someone who's crying rather than someone who's talking or just humming. And that's regardless of whether it was their owner or just a stranger. Damn, In the okay. same experiment, dogs would approach a stranger with submissive body language, almost as if they were trying to comfort them. Another experiment showed that dogs actually preferred interacting with individuals who use high-pitched baby voices with them instead of those who use normal, deeper voices. But my personal favorite, when a dog and its owner make eye contact, both bodies release oxytocin, which is considered a love hormone. Which just so happens to be the same one released when a mother and a newborn interact. You don't have to say anything, you don't have to touch them. You can stare at your dog and you'd be bonding. Which says a lot since their cousin the wolf sees that same eye contact as a challenge. Not only that, but dogs are one of the few animals that understand It's the not the same thing. Meaning the dogs and the wolves are not the same thing. They evolved, but we need to understand that now they are completely different. That story about chimp, I remember from this channel, like how they went to the zoo. And the other chimps literally tore off the owner's whatever face and, and that chimp literally froze up. The chimp was so shocked from that. The chimp froze up at the place. The domesticated chimp. So that just implies that like uh, animals in wildlife and animals in the all life that you know grew up in uh, human society is completely different. The dogs, domesticated dogs and cats kind of have thought process like human. They feel and think somewhat like human. And if they see something horrible that would horrify us, that would horrify them as well. <laughs> right? So, yeah. I mean, it makes sense about, you know, yeah. But uh, seriously, man, dogs, uh, how many breeds change? How much they evolved? We, we hear of, you know, any, you know, different species evolving. Dogs are the direct example in front of us. They evolved different because of us. From wolves to dogs, we did that. That is so good. I mean, you could point at something across the room and a dog will understand the look in the direction you're pointing where most animals would just be interested in your finger. Little things like that only happen after hundreds of years of being right by our side. We have service dogs, emotional support dogs, medical response and Seriously, police too dogs. Many. Basically any job worth having can have a dog involved somehow. We even trust them with our children. We might not deserve dogs, but dogs 100% deserve this spot. Yeah. The silver medal of wholesomeness goes to the capybara. No matter where this plus size guinea pig pulls up, it's always with good vibes and zero conflict. There are entire threads of cappies existing around other animals completely unbothered. The thing is, they could be a complete menace and it'd be totally justified. Capybara live in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the world and often share an area code with predators like jaguar, caiman, anacondas, and eagles. And it's not like these buffed beavers are tanky enough to have no worries, they often fall prey to those same predators. Normally, any animal that can get meal prepped by so many others is often high strung and hyper aggressive by nature. Mm. Nature knows zebras use that excuse. But not only are capybara the complete 180, you'll even see them around the same animals they should be afraid of. Cause this heavyweight hamster is allergic to most forms of conflict. Which is why when a bunch of orphan puppies needed a foster mom, it was a capybara that stepped up. But as chill as they are, capybara are still roided up rodents with teeth that they will use to defend themselves against people. 
But like with the quokka, if you managed to make this horse rabbit angry, you definitely did something to deserve it. The capybara stepped up for puppies? I love this, man. These stories are ridiculously good, right? Uh, wildlife can be so complex. I don't know, maybe I was always this, had, you know, not lots so much information about the wild. But before I started to watch these Casual Geographic videos, you know, I never knew that, you know, animals can be this complex. In tears of video, at the first time I realized that they can actually team up, right? Uh, that frog and tarantula, I think, was a spider thing. Like, what the fuck? And then there was also something else where, you know, crocodiles employ some uh, other, you know, I don't know what it was, but some animals. So that they can protect the eggs and crocodile can protect them. That's just ridiculously good. Aside from that, a happy cap is one of the most wholesome sights in nature. But they just barely miss out on the number one spot. What's number one? Of course the manatee was going to be number one. My personal <laughs> bias would allow no other outcome. Because their teeth are way in the back of their mouths, manatees are physically incapable of inflicting any form of violence. Even when they really should have. There are no recorded cases of manatees attacking other animals or people. The closest you get would be a water If you know, you know. I know that. And that's just fucked up. Ah, oh, man. That wasn't a mermaid, man. That wasn't a mermaid. <laughs> ...curiously approaching you and accidentally knocking you off your paddleboard. Alligators are seasoned prehistoric killing machines, and even they give manatees the right away in the water. Also, its closest relative happens to be the elephant, so again, any spot other than number one would be an insult. The only problem is their natural curiosity can put them in harm's way when humans, especially boats, are involved. Laws had to be put in place to protect manatees from harassment since we all know they're not going to defend themselves. They're literally too unproblematic for their own good. Dogs kill mm. thousands of people a year and someone in the world right now is walking around with a scarf from not respecting the quokka space. But you won't find a person who's been seriously hurt by this gentle giant. Because in a world full of darkness, the sea squishy is a beacon of positivity. But that's gonna do it for this video. For daily uploads, be sure to follow my TikTok- Yeah, gun the animal basically. I will not evolve any offensive weapon because as I said, I'll take my chances. If you slap me in one cheek, I'll put forward the other cheek. That's what that is. <laughs> Alright, well, that was the top 10 most wholesome animals. I loved this video. You should do more videos like this, right? Usual, usual is just like wildlife. You know, this gun murder, this, is, this animals are serial killer, chimpanzee stuff. They're just like, okay, I'm gonna be scarred for a few hours. But this was good. Alright, well, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.